Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Cook Inlet Tug and Barge is a marine transportation company specializing in harbor services with a primary marketing focus on the Port of Anchorage, providing their customers with quality-based service specifically tailored to their needs. The National Weather Service. Good evening and welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm Sam Albanese from the National Weather Service. In today's weather around the state, we did have so we do have some uh, winter weather advisories up along the Arctic coast for the Barrow area and west for some freezing rain expected tomorrow. We also still have some uh, red flag warnings on the north slopes of the Alaska Range, basically north of Denali on over towards uh, the uh, Delta Junction area. And that's until uh, this evening and, and early tomorrow, actually this evening. So uh, things are still a little bit of a concern with fire weather, but they're tapering off. Taking a look now at our satellite imagery, the uh, view of the uh, North Pacific into the Bering Sea. We can see what's happening. Here's one low pressure system. Th this system is a what we call a cold core low. It's got a lot of cold air associated with it. It's going to bring cold air back over the mainland over the next day or two actually into the weekend. And um, we are anticipating much cooler conditions over the south central region as this moves on in and even uh, the snow line dropping down to about 2,000 feet or so over much of the uh, mountains over the south central region. So it's something that people are going to have to be aware of if you're planning on doing any recreating. But running the loop again, you can see this low pressure system. It's in the Bering Sea. It's bringing in cold air with it. And then we have yet another system that's going to feed on up to just south of the Aleutian Islands over the next few days. Over the state of Alaska itself, here's what's going on. We have this southerly push of moisture. This has helped tremendously with our uh, wildfire situation on the Kenai Peninsula, that funny river fire. It's uh, brought a little bit of precip, but more importantly, cooler, uh, more moist conditions are helping to dampen the uh, fire activity. And uh, run that uh, loop one more time. Rain was spreading across Kodiak Island into the uh, Prince William Sound area, and also a lot of cloud cover over much of the western portion of the state, right on up to the Arctic coast. Taking a look at our map today, southeast Alaska had relatively benign weather, even though there was a ridge of high pressure here, that onshore push of the marine air off the Gulf of Alaska kept things relatively cloudy there. Rain was occurring in the western portions of Prince William Sound across Kodiak Island and over much of southwestern Alaska, even on up into the Kuskokwim Valley. Rain was also occurring up to the uh, Bering Strait region. All along the Arctic coast, there was uh, some light snow that was occurring there today and even some freezing rain over towards that Dead Horse area. Into the Bering Sea, uh, we had this weak low pressure system that was causing a mixture of rain and snow over the, over the Pribloff Islands. But the ridge of high pressure over the uh, remainder of the Aleutian Islands was generally resulting in cloudy conditions. And then the next storm system coming into the picture hasn't quite uh, made an impact yet to the western Aleutian Islands. By tonight, we have our low pressure system south of Kodiak Island. This is going to continue to pump moisture across Kodiak Island into the uh, Prince William Sound area and south central Alaska. Moderate to heavy rainfall can be expected on the Prince William Sound side of the Kenai Peninsula in this strong onshore push. Uh, on the uh, leeward side of the mountains, on the Kenai uh, Cook Inlet side, there will be some rainfall, sprinkly type weather, but not significant amounts of uh, precipitation are expected with that, although it's going to keep things cool and moist. Southwestern Alaska will continue to see rain and or showers into the western interior. Showers right on up uh, towards the Seward Peninsula, the south slopes of the Brooks Range. As we move north of the Brooks Range, expect a mixture of rain and snow showers north of the uh, western Brooks Range with snow showers all along the uh, Bering Sea coast. In the Bering, uh, not the Bering, the uh, Arctic coast. On the Bering Sea coast, excuse me, we have this low pressure system south of Nunavak Island, and that's going to result in the showers over the Kuskokwim Delta region, particularly the coastal areas, uh, to uh, become mixed with snow overnight. And mixed rain and snow showers will persist over the uh, Pribloff Islands. Expect rain along the Alaska Peninsula and the eastern Aleutian Islands. And with our system moving on into the western Aleutian Islands, expect uh, some rain to be spreading basically as far. Uh, east as the ADAC area. 
Southeast Alaska will remain under the influence of that high pressure, but that'll keep that marine air over the panhandle, although we expect some clearing conditions in the northern panhandle overnight tonight. Taking a look at the forecast now for Friday, our low pressure system is moving on up toward the Barren Island region, continuing to push a lot of moisture into Prince William Sound, across the Chugach Mountains into the Copper River Basin, also on up into the Susitna Valley. Expect a cool rainy day tomorrow for that region. Rain's also going to spread towards the Yakutat area and Sitka as well as even uh, Juneau. There's a chance of rain in that northern Panhandle region up towards the uh, Haines Skagway area and also a chance of rain further south. Into the interior, the eastern interior, uh, it's going to see cloudy conditions but on the lee side of the uh, Alaska range, windier conditions can be expected, uh, borderline advisory type winds can be expected there. Rainy conditions over western and southwest Alaska. Along the Bering Sea coast here from Nunavak Island down towards about Dillingham, there should be some snow mixed in with rain early on. That will change all over terrain as the day progresses and conditions warm up a little bit. Back up towards the Arctic coast, that's where we have a winter weather advisory for uh, basically freezing rain uh, that went up today for uh, tomorrow uh, until about 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Not a lot of freezing rain, less than a tenth of an inch, but freezing rain nonetheless. Rain and snow along the north slopes of the Brooks Range. Out to the Aleutian Islands and our uh, uh, low south of the Aleutian Islands, rain's gonna spread all the way on over to just uh, west of the uh, Dutch Harbor area, uh, across the uh, length of the Aleutian Islands, and in the Shemi area, the rain should be ending. Taking a look now at the forecast for Saturday. By Saturday, we have this broad ridge of high pressure over the Gulf of Alaska. And again, this is going to continue with an onshore push into southeast Alaska. Likely to see some rain in the Juneau area. Chance of rain throughout the remainder of southeast Alaska. Expect rain to continue in the Yakutat area as well, and even into Prince William Sound. Although the front has gone by, southwesterly flow is going to continue to push moisture on up across the region. Same thing for the Cook Inlet region cool wet conditions and again on Saturday this is when that colder air is coming in aloft that's going to result in a drop in the uh, freezing levels and therefore we're anticipating snow down to about the 2,000 to 2,500 foot level so like the Anchorage hillside the upper hillside region you may very well see some snow uh, mixed in with your rain in the early morning hours there rain across southwestern Alaska the western interior our low pressure systems are up along the Brooks Range expect rain or showers along the length of the Brooks Range and on the north side of the Brooks Range towards the Arctic coast, a mixture of rain and snow showers is going to be persisting throughout the day Saturday there. Along the Bering Sea coast where we have our trough of low pressure, uh, the cold air is still entrained in this. Rain and snow showers in the morning becoming uh, pretty much all rain showers and scattered type uh, showers at that. Rain showers up into the Bering Strait. Along the Alaska Peninsula, we should see some showery conditions. And even on the Alaska Peninsula, you may see uh, a little bit of snow mixing in with those rain showers in the morning and over, overnight Friday night into Saturday morning. Same thing for the Dutch Harbor area, a mixture of snow in those rain showers in the morning hours. Over the uh, Bering Sea itself and the Aleutian Islands, high pressure is moving into the picture there. Expect some breaks in the clouds, but typically with high pressure in the Bering Sea this time of year, there's also going to be a lot of fog likely in the, in the Bering Sea. Along the Aleutian Islands, expect cloudy conditions as well as some fog as well with that high pressure system. Taking a look now at temperatures around the state today. In southeast Alaska, temperatures were on the mild side in the mid-50s throughout much all of the panhandle. Let's move on over into the south central region in Prince William Sound Cook Inlet region. Again, with the cloud cover that we experienced today and the rain on and off showery type conditions, Temperatures are much cooler than we ha what we had seen in the past week or so in the uh, low to mid 50s there. In the Copper River Basin temperatures did poke up into near 60. And then as we cross the uh, Alaska Range into the Tanana Valley and that upper Yukon Valley region, temperatures in the 60s to low 70s throughout that area. 60 degree readings in the central interior. And then as we kind of push on up towards the Arctic coast, take a look at what was happening there. Uh, much cooler conditions, temperatures in the mid-20s to mid-30s across the Arctic coast north of the Brooks Range. Along the Brooks Range itself, temperatures generally in the 50s. Over towards the Seward Peninsula, Kotzebue Sound area, mid-30s to mid-40s. Uh, Nome was only at about 42 degrees. And as we move on down towards the uh, Bering Sea coast here, Yukon and Cuscombe Delta temperatures inland were in the mid-40s, mid-30s along the coast itself. 
Taking a look at the southwest part of the state in Bristol Bay, temperatures generally in the 40s, although we did see King Salmon get up to about 51. Across the Alaska Peninsula, temperatures generally in the uh, 40s as well, mid to upper 40s, low 50s uh, over that eastern Alaska Peninsula region. And the Pribilof Islands, mid to upper 30s there. 40, low uh, 40s over the uh, Dutch Harbor area and across the Aleutian Islands in the mid 40s over the central Aleutians dropping off to the low 40s as we move on out to the western Aleutian Islands out at Shemya. Taking a look now at our low temperature forecast for tonight. In southeast Alaska expect your temperatures to stay in the mid to upper 40s throughout the panhandle. Same thing along the uh, north Gulf Coast in the south central region generally in the mid 40s. M some temperatures might stay in the upper 40s overnight. In the uh, eastern interior, temperatures in the upper 30s to upper 40s, even as warm as 50 in the Fort Yukon area. Up along the Brooks Range, temperatures in the mid 30s, and as we move on up to the Arctic coast, temperatures generally can be expected to be in the 20s, although over towards Barter Island, you may see the temperature only drop down to 30. Over the northwest portion of the state in the Seward Peninsula, Bering Strait, temperatures in the mid 30s to low 40s. Same thing over the Yukon and Kuskokwim Delta, mid 30s to low 40s there. Low 40s in the Bristol Bay area, across the Alaska Peninsula, upper 30s to low 40s, mid 30s over the Pribilof Islands, upper 30s in the eastern Aleutian Islands at Dutch Harbor, with temperatures in the low 40s across the remainder of the Aleutian Islands. Taking a look at our highs for tomorrow, the hot spot's going to be that eastern interior, basically in the uh, mid 70s there to uh, upper 60s. Temperatures over the uh, south central region are going to stay on the cool side, like much like they were today, generally in the mid 50s. Southeast Alaska may see some temperatures reaching into the low 60s, but overall temperatures in the uh, mid to upper 50s there, Yakutat at about 53. And as we move on over towards southwestern Alaska, temperatures generally in the 40s, um, mid 50s over the Kodiak Island area, and temperatures in the 40s across the Alaska Peninsula. Temperatures in the Pribilof Islands are not going to quite make it into the 40s at about 37 degrees there. And in the Aleutian Islands, expect your temperature highs to remain in the low to mid 40s across the central to western Aleutian Islands. Taking a look now at our flying weather around the state for tomorrow. Southeast Alaska, generally marginal conditions because of the cloud cover. IFR conditions later in the day over the uh, north Gulf Coast. IFR conditions throughout the day in Prince William Sound, especially the western portions of the Sound. IFR conditions along the Alaska Range across Cook Inlet with marginal conditions over much of the south central region and portions of the Copper River Basin. Marginal conditions throughout much of southwestern Alaska with IFR conditions along that Bering Sea coast off the uh, Yukon Kuskokwim Delta with IFR conditions up through the uh, St. Lawrence Island region. And up along the Arctic coast, IFR conditions over Barrow and uh, west with marginal conditions as you move on down towards the Alaska Range. Out in the Aleutian Islands, expect marginal to IFR conditions basically west of uh, the uh, Unalaska area throughout the length of the Aleutian Islands with that system that's moving into the picture out there. For our passes tomorrow, expect marginal conditions for Anaktubik and Adigan Pass, and that's because of, uh, th those marginal conditions will be on the north side of the passes. IFR conditions for Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, IFR conditions for Rainy Pass, marginal conditions for Windy Pass, possibly IFR there. Expect VFR conditions in Isabel as well as Mentasta Pass. And then as we move on down towards Tanita Pass, marginal conditions are likely there with the inclement weather that's moving in. Portage Pass, expect conditions to be marginal to IFR. Actually, they should be IFR throughout the day tomorrow, and uh, I'm not expecting any smoke there. Marginal conditions for both Chilkoot and White Pass are also expected tomorrow. Taking a look now at our freezing levels around the state, Southeast Alaska is still in that warmer air, freezing levels up around 8,000 feet right on up into the eastern interior. Freezing levels are going to be dropping to about uh, four to 6,000 feet over the south central region and down to about 2,000 feet as we get over southwestern Alaska and on up into the Bering Strait. Up along the Arctic coast, expect the freezing level to be right at near the surface with some uh, warmer air aloft moving in in the southerly push. Uh, from this system that's been pushing moisture over the state. Out over the Bering Sea, basically uh, 2,000 foot freezing levels over the majority of the Bering Sea, but sloping, uh, sea, sloping up to about 6,000 feet as we move on out to the western Aleutian Islands. Taking a look at icing for tomorrow, expect occasional moderate mixed icing in southeast Alaska and the north Gulf Coast. And actually that's going to be really late in the day for that icing to move in. The, the worst icing will be 
uh, throughout the day over the uh, Yakutat area to Prince William Sound. This will be overnight type conditions tomorrow night for southeast Alaska. The majority of the day shouldn't see too much in the way of icing there. Over southwestern Alaska, expect moderate rime icing over the majority of southwestern Alaska right on up to the Norton Sound region as well as uh, the eastern Bering Sea. Along the Arctic coast, expect some moderate rime icing from your freezing level to 16,000 feet there. And then out over the Aleutian Islands, ex expect some moderate rime icing from your freezing level to about 12,000 feet out there. Our jet stream starts off at about 90 knots off the Kamchatka Peninsula, accelerating to 100 knots south of the Alaska Peninsula. Then as we come on across the Gulf of Alaska, it's well south of the Gulf, makes landfall down by Vancouver Island at about 75 uh, knots. Taking a look now at our 9,000 foot level, over southeast Alaska, about 15 knot winds there, 25 to 35 knot winds over that north Gulf coast to the uh, Kenai Peninsula, about 45 knot winds coming across the eastern Alaska Peninsula, 20 to 25 knot winds across much of western Alaska, dropping off about 10 to 15 knots as we get up towards the Arctic coast and the north of the Bering Strait. And in the Bering Sea itself, about 20 knot winds coming down across the Pribloff Islands, right on down towards the central and western Aleutian Islands with 25 knots way out over the western Aleutian Islands. Down to the 3,000 foot level, generally pretty light winds over southeast Alaska, about 10 knots, offshore 20 to 30 knots, uh, pushing on up towards the north Gulf Coast there and Prince William Sound. Lighter winds across Kodiak Island, 15 to 20 knot winds over the eastern interior, 10 knots over the uh, eastern Brooks Range with 30 knot winds to 25 knot winds over the central to western Arctic coast. Light winds over the southwest portion of the state in the yukon Kuskokwim Delta region. 20 to 25 knot winds across the Alaska Peninsula with 10 knot winds over the western Aleutian Islands. And for turbulence, expect some isolated turbulence below 3,000 feet over Kodiak Island in the Alaska Peninsula. Isolated turbulence, moderate turbulence over the south central region to Yakutat, and some isolated moderate turbulence over the western Brooks Range. That wraps up this portion of the show. Enjoy the segment and come back to the marine forecast. Those short but starry nights of summer are about to arrive. Hey there, stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. Let us be your guides to the sky. Summer officially begins for the Northern Hemisphere on Saturday, June 21st at 6.51 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. But the skies are already loaded with wonderful summer constellations and planets. Let's show you. Okay, we've got our skies set up for this week and next, 10 p.m. facing north, where you'll see the Little Dipper at its very highest above the North Star. In fact, the North Star is the star at the end of the handle of the Little Dipper. Now, the Little Dipper is not nearly as large or bright as the Big Dipper, but if you have dark skies, you can see it. The handle is drawn from the North Star through two very dim stars, which then connects to two more dim stars to draw part of the bowl and then another dim star, and finally a slightly brighter star named Kochab finishes off the bowl of the Little Dipper. Now, the Big Dipper is a much brighter and larger star pattern and is directly to the Little Dipper's left in the northwest. Four stars mark its cup, and three stars mark its handle. And once you've found the Big Dipper, you can shoot an arrow through its handle across the sky, almost overhead, and down into the western sky to find one of the top three brightest stars in the sky, Arcturus. It is the brightest star of Boötes the Herdsman, which looks something like a kite. Then if you extend that arrow from Arcturus, it might land on Spica, the brightest star of Virgo. Now I say might because this year there are three points of light that will make good targets for your arrow. The light in the middle is the star Spica in the zodiacal constellation Virgo. 14 degrees to Spica's right is the noticeably brighter red planet Mars. Then about 25 degrees to the left of Spica is the ring planet Saturn. Now Saturn is also brighter than Spica. And if you look carefully, Saturn is slightly more yellow in appearance. Take a look and see for yourself. So you're probably asking, which is which and how can I be sure? Well, the moon will be doing its pointer thing over the next week or so. So use it. 
Let's start on May 31st with a three-day-old moon below Jupiter. Then on June 3rd and 4th, the moon will bracket Regulus, the brightest star in Leo the Lion. Then on June 7th, Mars will be just above a waxing gibbous moon. But Mars will be bright enough to compete with the light of the moon. The next night, the 8th of June, a bigger and brighter moon will be just to the right of Spica. And the moon will probably overwhelm Spica. On the 9th and 10th, the moon will be on either side of Saturn. And the next night, a nearly full moon will be above Antares, the brightest star of summer's scorpion. If you continue turning and face east, you'll see the three incredibly bright stars which mark the points of the summer triangle. The brightest is Vega in Lyra the Harp, the second brightest, Altair in Aquila the Eagle, and the third brightest, Deneb in Cygnus the Swan. And every year as summer begins, we always see these three celestial dazzlers rising over the eastern horizon, announcing that summer is here. So there you have it. Every direction you look, you'll see wonderful stars as we await the beginning of summer 2014. In the south, Scorpius. In the east, the three brilliant stars of the summer triangle, Vega, Deneb, and Altair. In the north, both the Little and Big Dippers. Then, following the handle of the Big Dipper into the southwest, Arcturus and then Spica, with the planets Mars and Saturn on either side. And finally, hugging the western horizon, Jupiter below Leo, the lion, both bidding us farewell. And in the morning sky, in the east, Venus is still blazing away and will daily approach the Pleiades to give you a bit of a preview of fall skies. Summer nights are short, but this summer is going to show you lots of wonderful starry sights, so remember to keep, keep looking up. Welcome back, and now let's take a look at our marine forecast for southeast Alaska for Friday. Starting off with in the inside waters, southern inside uh, waters and the uh, central inside waters, south to southeast winds 15 knots. Winds increasing to 25 knots later in the day up through that Lynn Canal Glacier Bay area. Along the outer coastal waters, expect south to southeast winds 20 to 25 knots to 25 knots southeasterly winds along that east Gulf Coast. Taking a look at the area for Saturday, expect winds to become more variable in the southern inside waters. South 15 in the middle inside waters with south winds 25 knots persisting up through Lynn Canal and Glacier Bay. Out along the uh, outer waters, the east Gulf Coast, the winds are going to become west at 20 knots. Same thing as we move further south uh, and also uh, down towards Sitka, south to southwest 20 knots with 15 knots southwesterlies in the uh, southern outside waters. Taking a look at the south central region for Friday, expect your winds to uh, be gale force 40 knot winds along the uh, north Gulf Coast, 30 knots as we move a little bit further to the west there. 30 knot winds in Prince William Sound out of the east. Cook Inlet, expect your winds out of the east to northeast about 20 knots. Southeast winds 25 knots across the Barren Islands. And the Kodiak Island waters in the Shelikov Strait, southwest winds 25 knots and southwest winds 30 knots south of Kodiak Island itself. On Saturday, expect conditions to become predominantly southwest across the majority of the area. 25 to 30 knot winds over the Kodiak Island area, 25 knot winds coming up Cook Inlet, 25 knot winds south of the Kenai Peninsula, as well as south of Prince William Sound out of the southwest, with winds a bit lighter in Prince William Sound itself at south to southeast at 15 knots. Taking a look at the Alaska Peninsula waters for Friday, west winds throughout the entire region, 30 knots south of the Alaska Peninsula, 25 knots up into Bristol Bay, and 30 knot winds north of the western Alaska Peninsula. Taking a look at the area for Saturday, southwest winds 30 knots in, in the uh, Bristol Bay area. Uh, west to southwest winds 25 knots south of the Alaska Peninsula with west winds 25 knots north of the Alaska Peninsula. Taking a look now at the forecast for the Aleutian Islands. 30 knot winds over the eastern Aleutian Islands uh, by uh, Unalaska and Dutch Harbor out of the west. 15 to 20 knots as we move a little bit further west of them towards Atka and Adak. 15 to 20 knots as well out of the west southwest. And then as we move further out across the Aleutian Islands uh, over the Amchitka area, winds are going to become more northeasterly at 20 knots. And also over the western Aleutian Islands at Shemya, expect your winds out of the northeast at 20 knots. By Saturday, the winds are going to late in the day become more southerly at 25 knots over the western Aleutian Islands. 
winds are remaining northeast 20 knots over the central Aleutian Islands over the Amchitka area. And then as we move on to the east, northeast winds 20 knots over the Atka area and Adak, north winds 15 knots more as we move more towards Nikolsky, and northwest to west winds at about 15 to 20 knots over the eastern Aleutian Islands. Taking a look at the Bering Sea coastal waters for Friday, expect your winds to be out of the west at 25 knots across the Pribilof Islands, as well as south of Nunavak Island, northwest 25 over the St. Matthew Island region, north winds 20 knots in the St. Lawrence Island area with variable winds 15 knots north of Nunavak Island. On Saturday, the winds are going to be northwest 20 knots from St. Lawrence to St. Matthew Island, west 15 to 25 knots over that Nunavak Island region, and west winds 15 knots as you move on out towards the Pribilof Islands. Taking a look at the Arctic coastal waters for Friday, expect your winds to be out of the east 30 knots over the eastern Arctic coast, becoming northeast as we move over towards Barrow at 25 knots, northeast 30 knots over the western Arctic coastal region, and then as we come over towards uh, Cape Lisburn down to outside of Cotsview Sound, north winds to northwest winds 20 to 30 knots there. Taking a look at the area for Saturday, expect your winds to increase to gale force 35 knots over the eastern Arctic coastal region, tapering off to 25 knots as we get on over towards Barrow, northeast 25 knots over the northwest Arctic coast with north winds 20 knots outside of Kotzebue Sound. For a quick recap, the uh, important thing to remember is up along the Arctic coast, we do have that winter weather advisory for tomorrow for freezing rain basically from Barrow West, rain, uh, snow showers overnight, some mi a mixture of rain and snow showers as we move on towards the Brooks Range, a mixture of rain and snow showers overnight in the uh, Nunavak Island region out towards uh, and also out towards the Pribilof Islands, rain throughout the south central region and generally cloudy conditions over the uh, panhandle. By tomorrow we're expecting rain to persist over the south central region, rain over much of western Alaska, a mixture of rain and snow in the morning hours, snow and freezing rain up along the Arctic coast as well. We're about out of time for the show this evening. Thank you for watching and have a good evening. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.